so uh, today we'll have a second lecture of Lucien Enekar on uh, Kohas for two collabial categories. So please. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, it's good to see you again. Um, so I'm going to start with a brief summary of uh, lecture one. So last time I introduced the constructible derived category of an algebraic variety defined over the complex numbers. I also introduced the abelian category of perverse sheaves as the heart of some T structure. And we saw that if M is a monoid in the category of complex schemes, so something which can have infinitely many connected components, uh, then the constructible derived category has some monoidal structure, which I denoted by um, a dot in a square. Also, if the direct sum map, so the structure map of this monoid is finite, then uh, the category of perverse sheaves is preserved by this monoidal structure, uh, right? And we've seen that we can use monoidal functors, for example, uh, cohomology, so derived global sections, to transfer algebra objects uh, in one category, so in this category of constructible sheaves, to other categories. And also, uh, I explain how all classical constructions can carry over this uh, more exotic monoidal category. So, uh, Lucien, just for those who maybe didn't hear you, so as M, you kind of think as sort of uh, maybe a stack of objects of the category with direct sums, some additive category or something like that. What kind of should be the working example for M? So you should think of M as, uh, for example, some monoid, free monoid generated by, um, so N to some power, natural numbers to some power. Yeah, but in practical things, um, because, you, should, you know. Yeah, yeah, in practical, you should think of M as a good modular space. of objects in some category, in abelian category. And the monoidal structure will be what? And monoidal structure is direct sum. Okay. So That's... good modular space is going to parameterize semi-simple objects in practice, in mm -hmm. some abelian category. And direct sum is, uh, is going to be the direct sum of semi-simple objects. Mm -hmm. um, so this one is not really geometric, but then you can you have more more geometric examples we will see uh, below. Okay, and 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 one assumption I put so I assume that the monoid of connected components of M was something like or maybe you can just uh, let's say some uh, some sub monoids of these kinds of monoids and. This is to have some well-behaved, uh, for example, when you take the free algebra of this monoidal structure generated by some object, let's say uh, G is a perverse sheaf, then the restriction of this thing to any connected components uh, of this monoid, I want it to be a, a, a true perverse sheaf, so a finite uh, direct sum. Something like this. Right, so it's a technical condition. Okay, so today I would like to introduce uh, our notion of two Calabiao abelian category, and I will give you examples and uh, the moduli stacks. Then I will explain how to construct the two dimensional cohomological whole algebra structure and how to define the PPS algebra of, of such categories. And last, I will uh, make the connection with critical cohomological whole algebras uh, via dimensional reduction. OK, so first I have a bunch of examples. Maybe I will explain uh, one of them. So the first example is the preproductive algebra uh, of a quiver. If you start with a quiver Q with set of vertices Q0 and arrows Q1, then you can, so for example, this quiver, you can build the double quiver 
it has the same set of vertices Q0, but uh, you double the set of arrows. So for any arrow in Q1, you add an arrow in the opposite direction. And I denote this by Q1 up. So for example, on this quiver, uh, to alpha, you add some arrow alpha star going in this opposite direction, which doesn't do much for a loop. For To beta, you add something in the reverse direction and so on. Uh, there is some canonical elements in the path algebra of this double quiver, given by the commutator of uh, loops with their opposite. So this is this element row. Uh, the projective algebra of the quiver is defined to be the quotient of the path algebra of the double quiver by the two-sided ideal generated by row. And it's possible to prove that this pre-projective algebra is to Calabiao in a sense that I haven't defined if Q is not thinking ADE. So maybe the, the most stupid example would be to take the point quiver. And in this case, uh, by taking the double, you don't do much. And by taking the quotient, you don't do much either. So pre-projective algebra is going to be the, 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 the algebra of complex numbers. So it reduces to the base field. And it's definitely not a uh, two Calabia algebra in, in, um, in a reasonable direct uh, immediate sense. Um, but still, you can, you can consider, you can work with this pre-projective algebra as if it were two Calabia by working with, um, uh, some DG algebra. So, right. So let me explain how to construct the stack of objects of this pre-projective algebra. So you define some uh, affine algebraic variety, which I denote by XQT. It's the representation space of D-dimensional representations of the quiver of Q, where D is some dimension vector, so some uh, Q0 tuple of uh, non-negative integers. And for each arrow in the quiver Q, you take a linear map um, from the source, from the vector space corresponding to the source to the vector space corresponding to the targets of the arrow. Um, if you double the quiver, so Q bar, you can canonically identify using the trace map the representation space for Q bar with the cotangent space to the representation space for Q. And you have a GLD action on both spaces. So the GLD action acts by change of basis at each vertex. This GLD is a product of uh, general linear groups. And it's quite a general fact that when you, you have a GLD action on some varieties, then the induced action on the cotangent bundle is Hamiltonian action. And so you have uh, a moment map. So this moment map in this situation is very explicit. Uh, and it's here. So it's exactly given by the pre-projective relation I wrote before. So the element row. Um, so this interpretation gives you a description of the stack of, of, of representations of pi cube of dimension d. It's uh, the stacky quotient of the pre-image of zero by the moment map by this group action. So it's a stack. And if you perform some uh, uh, affine GIT quotient, then you obtain the coarse moduli space of representations of pi cube, which parametrizes semi-simple representation of pi cube of dimension d. Uh, and it's an affine algebraic variety. So it's defined as the spectrum of uh, the ring of invariants, invariant functions on mu minus one of zero. Okay, so this is the example of pre-projective algebra, the most fundamental example, as uh, uh, we will see later. Then you have other examples, which I briefly mentioned. So multiplicative pre-projective algebras. 
you replace the, the moment map is replaced by some multiplicative moment map. Uh, you have sheaves and symplectic surfaces. So the, the word symplectic will uh, is a mirror to the world to the to the words to Calabiao. For example, you may take some uh, abelian or K3 surface or the cotangent bundle to some smooth projective curve. And then what you, you take is the category of semi-stable coherent sheaves of some normalized Hilbert polynomial over the surface. So without going into too many details, you can construct the moduli stack using quote schemes and the good moduli space using some GIT quotient. Yeah, I'm a bit confused because uh, like some, there is a mixture of the notion of Tukala BR algebra, actually in abelian category and something else, which probably should be called Tukala BR category. And these are... Yes. Yes, yes. it's kind of... Right. Uh, so this thing would be, we don't have any algebra in this situation. So you should think of this category as a two Calabiao abelian category. Uh, right. I will, I will give more detail uh, later. And maybe one last example I would like to mention is uh, given by the category of representations of the fundamental group of some Riemann surface of genus G. So it's possible to describe the funda fundamental group of such a Riemann surface by generators and relations. You have two, two G generators, Xi and Yi, satisfying one relation, which looks like, which is a multiplicative uh, version of moment map. And uh, this category, the category of represent, so the fundamental group algebra, the group algebra associated to this group is two Calabiao when the genus of the Riemann surface is at least one. Otherwise, you can again perform some DG construction to replace. Yeah, but I'm kind of oh, yeah. a bit confused. Because unless, until you will say us what do you mean by two Calabia or category, this example can be considered a sort of a tautology. Because hmm, you can take the cotangent bundle to, to, to your Riemann surface, which is a two-dimensional surface, all right? And it's Calabia, and so you can look for the mm, modules over up to Fukaya category, which is the same as the modules, DG modules of the based loops, and it's a two-calabial category, and this base space loops in the case of surfaces, because it's KP1 so, uh, uh, space, it's quasi-isomorphic to the group algebra of P1, so I, I really do not see what... Unless you give mm -hmm. some non-standard definition, I do not see why you put the name Davis on here because it seems to be obvious. Yeah, maybe the definition is uh, a bit tricky, so then it's not obvious. But so yes, I, I, I so my definition of two Calabia algebra. A, but is there is no, like... uh, is, is it, you, you, what I see is a category representations yes, yes, yes. of P1. It's not uh -huh. an algebra, it's, it's a representation of a group algebra, yeah? probably. Yeah? Right, so, so maybe you want something, yeah. uh, maybe it would be like the group yeah. algebra of this group. What, what I want, it's, uh, and you consider it, uh, it is an, as an abelian category, yeah? Uh, yes. The Nobelian category. Then really uh, one should say uh, what is uh, uh, Abelian to Calabiao category because it's a bit unnatural. 
Mm -hmm. notion of Kalabiyao category, it's triangulated. You, you, roughly speaking, your serve functor is isomorphic to the shift of, by the dimension. Right. And this so is I'm... the simplest possible difference, but then you can make it more complicated. And so that's what is my question. Yeah, yeah so I, I can answer your question. Said that there are nice... categories for Calabio. On, on the next page. No, I'm no, but to... this is obvious. If, if ah. he speaks about the derived level, there is no question. I mean, it's very, very easy, for example, because it's the same as a character variety, so it just uh, a complex structure rotated rotation from Higgs bundles, which obviously to Calabiao category because there is a cell duality in dimension two. So then there should be something in the definition of the Calabiao algebra right. uh, and Calabiao abelian category. In abelian. So I will show you on the next slide what I mean more precisely. Mm -hmm. um, so in here you have I give you the construction of the moduli stack. So it's very similar to the construction for preprojective algebra by just taking pre-image of identity by this multiplicative moment map and quotient by GLM. Okay, so now let's let's move on to to two Calabiao category in a, in a particular sense. So in this situation we have some ambient pre triangularity DG category, which I denote by D. And we denote by uh, MD, the derived stack of objects in this uh, triangulated category. So it parameterizes perfect uh, module over, perfect DG module over this DG category. Then the category C is some abelian subcategory of the homotopy category of D which is triangulated, such that the moduli stack of objects in C is a one artin substack of the stack of objects in D. So it's an open substack, so it has a derived structure, and one artin means that the classical truncation of MC is uh, an artin stack. Uh, when you say Arkin stack, do you allow countable union of disjoint components? I allow countable unions of connected components, uh, yes. Yeah, because technically Arkin stack probably should be of finite type and this disjoint so, uh, union, again, formally it's not quite. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I, like... Right, so I abuse a little bit notation uh, terminology by by Artin stack, so each fine, each connected component is of finite type. So, for example, this thing can be the disjoint union over all the possible dimension vectors of the stack of d dimensional representations of some preprojective algebra. And each connected component is a quotient stack of uh, a finite type a finite type scheme by some general linear group. Uh, and the two Calabio structure can be defined in the following sense. So if you take, if you pick some points in the good moduli space of the stack, which you assume exists, so you assume you have a map to some uh, algebraic space, the good moduli space map. So good moduli space means that it satisfies some uh, nice properties that I not giving. Uh, but now. is it a variety or is it, is it a scheme? Um, so in general, it's going to be when the good moduli space exists, it's, it exists as an uh, as an algebraic space, but we want it to be a, a scheme. So we assume that it's each connected component is a finite type scheme. Yeah, but when you say pick points, uh, then the question is, what do you mean by points? Either you take closed points, or you take a test scheme and consider, so then your whatever simple object should exist in families. 
Yeah, yes, they did. exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, from from now on, we assume that each connected component is a finite tap scheme over C over complex numbers, and so we pick some C points, so some uh, some closed points, some geometric points, and they correspond to simple objects of the category C, F one up to F R. Um, so we can look at the DG category generated by these simple objects. So the, the D prime inside D generated by F1 up to FR. And the two Calabio structure is that this DG category should have some uh, right to Calabio structure in the sense of Prav and Dickerhoff, which roughly speaking, Means that we have bifactorial isomorphisms uh, between the X groups of any two objects in the in this uh, DG category D prime. Yeah, I I have two questions. Probably they will be answered. You will answer them somewhere later. But I am too confused in the complication of this definition. So you see, wait. Hmm. Uh, so uh, two questions why uh, one why you work with simple objects which for which you really need an abelian category and you do not work with spherical objects for which you do not need an abelian category it's kind of more more general stuff uh, second i don't know what is the right to Calabial structure in the sense of uh, Braff and Dickerhoff, but I don't, I know what is a two Calabial category. Maybe right, yeah, indeed, but uh, mm, uh, so I'm kind of a bit confused why you need C at all, why, why you cannot work with D and some spherical objects in D. Uh, I could work with D and spherical object. Um, uh, the definition I'm giving here is tailored to, to for, for the neighborhood theorem I will explain later. Ah, okay, so, okay, okay, I see. So you want so, that uh, the, uh, this sort of a pre-projective algebra will be a model, local model or something like yes. that? Yeah, okay, okay. So I put more restrictions than I should because I, to have a local description of this stack MC. So you could you could consider a sigma, like sigma collection of spherical objects instead of, of just a, a collection of simple objects. Okay, so this two Calabio condition is, is roughly speaking some symmetry of the S groups and the two Calabio, the two is here. Um, as I already said, we want we would like the stack MC, which is an Artin stack with finite type connected components, to have a good moduli space. So we have this map JH to uh, some algebraic space, but we would like to assume that it is a finite type separated uh, complex scheme. So, I mean, finite type is not true, but each connected component is of finite type. Um, and in particular, one thing that is a consequence of being a good modular space is that this map JH is universal among map to an algebraic space. So for any map to an algebraic space, uh, M prime, this map will factor through the good modular space. Um, so since we're working with linear stacks, so the category C is a is a C is a category, we have a direct sum of objects from two copies of the stack to itself, which induces uh, by using the universality of this good modular space map J H. A direct sum map on the good moduli spaces, which gives a monoid structure on uh, MC. So MC is now going to be the monoid um, we will be considering. 
Um, so the ambient DG category is important to have what we call the ARM complex. It's the complex computing extensions between objects in uh, in the DG category D. So I wrote a few lines to say what it is. Uh, when you restrict to some uh, the spectrum of A, where A is a is a commutative uh, non-DG algebra. So the spec A points of the stack MD by construction parametrize are exactly pseudo-perfect uh, modules over D tensor product this algebra A. And then you can consider the, the home complex between two such points, which is a DGA module, and this defines some uh, some complex, some uh, some perfect complex on the square of the stack of objects in D, which you can restrict to the stack of objects in the abelian category. Um, uh, what means pseudo perfect? So it means that it's perfect over A only. It's mm -hmm. uh, okay. D... sort of vector bundle, very roughly, very, very roughly, it's kind of vector bundles so locally whatever three shifts over a something like that or complexes yes yeah. yes exactly um and so we denote this complex or a shift by one of this complex by c um right so by the two Calab the two Calabio uh, condition implies that C has store amplitude in uh, minus one one. And uh, locally you can present it as a complex of vector bundles in degree minus one, zero and one. Uh, the importance of this complex it comes from the fact that it gives you the stack of short exact sequences in the abelian category C by taking the total space of this uh, perfect complex over MC times MC. So you have this complex and you take the total space. It's something isomorphic, a stack isomorphic um, equivalent to the stack of shorted sequences in C. So you can put it in a in a diagram like this. Um, so if you take a short exact sequence, you can project it to the extreme terms. So you land in MC times MC. This is the extreme term map. Or you can just keep the middle term. And this is the map P. And this correspondence can, can be completed using the good moduli space and the direction map in a, in a big commutative uh, rectangle. So in, in this diagram, the map P is assumed to be proper and the map Q is quasi smooth. Uh, so I have a question. What do, do you mean is assumed? It's a very strong property, especially, yeah, Bo both of them are sort of strong. And in some cases, it's not even clear how to check them. Uh, and so it, it's simply part of the axiomatics of what? It's part of the axiomatics. And mm -hmm. this is something we can check on all examples I gave uh, before in the, in the previous uh -huh. section. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, pr properness, we, we expect properness in quite big generality, but it's quite hard to, to check, actually. It's like, also, it's quote schemes, properness of quote schemes, or pro uh, projectivity of uh, quiver Grassmannians, for example. And quasi-smooth comes from the description of this stack of short exact sequences as a total space of some uh, complex of vector bundles. Mm, okay. 
Okay. And the thing I would like to explain, so one uh, fundamental theorem is the local neighborhood theorem for two Calabria category. So I give I, I need one more notion, the notion of X quivers. So as before, we take some we have some DG category D, inside which uh, some we'll have some abelian finite length abelian category C. And we take some collection of simple objects in C. Then we can define the X quiver of uh, this connection of collection of simple objects as follows. So the set of vertices Q0 is exactly the set of simple objects we, 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 we chose. And the number of arrows between SI and SJ between these two vertices is by definition uh, the dimension of the first X group between SI and SJ. But we work in in this triangulated category, um, so it's 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 might differ from extensions between SI and SJ in the abelian category C. And now the, the local neighborhood theorem states the following. So first we have the dimension vector monoid for the quiver uh, Q bar. And for any dimension vector M, you can obtain a representation of the preprojective algebra of Q by just taking the zero representation. So the representation acting uh, by zero, any arrow acts by zero. And on the other side, you can take the direct sum of the simples with multiplicities given by this dimension vector. Uh, the neighborhood theorem tells you that the map, the good modular space map for the stack MC looks like the corresponding map for the preprojective algebra of the quiver Q, which uh, in more detail gives you a diagram as this. So again, I, I put the notation. Q bar is a X quiver of this collection of simple objects. And if you take some dimension vector, then you can find some finite type scheme U with some GLM action, the same M, and the, and the diagram with Cartesian squares whose horizontal maps are etal. So, which means that uh, around the point SM, the semi simple representation, the semi simple object of A, the stack of object MC looks like the stack of objects of the preprojective algebra. So this thing is some uh, and uh, this is compatible with the modular spaces. So the so good modular space around this point, the semi-simple object in, in C, looks like uh, the modular space of representations of pi q around zero. And one additional thing we have is that this is compatible with the the, the Ahram complex uh, I define coming from uh, from the derived geometry of these stacks. So which in formula means that if you take the the Ahram complex for the preprojective algebra and you restrict over to the fiber over the zero representation, you get the same thing as the Ahom complex for the abelian category C, which you restrict over XY. So in here, uh, X is the direct sum of simples corresponding to M. And why is there a sum of simples corresponding to M? And this is something important because uh, the cohomological whole algebra multiplication is built using these three term complex complexes.
So this means that when we will restrict cohomological whole algebras to um, the to, to, to the fibers over zero for pre-projective algebra or to some collection of simple objects in some two calabia or abelian category, then we will get isomorphic al algebras. Okay, so this uh, finishes the uh, section about two Calabia categories. And now, uh, after our questions, I will explain how to construct co the two dimensional cohomological whole algebra structure and how to define the BPS algebra. So, uh, I have a question. If kind of I forget about this abelian. Uh, mm. Categories and work with DG stacks. Uh, so, uh, what will be the problem? Uh, I, I, I will have the same same result. I believe I don't know the details. So, for for this local for this neighborhood theorem, you mean? Yeah. For example, yeah, uh, yeah. and yeah. Uh, in fact, I, I don't know if I replace this collection of the symbols, I don't know, by by some kind of a good generator of a two color BL category in, in the triangulated sense. So what will be wrong? I will still uh, have some endomorphisms of these generators and so yes, on. Yes, everything works the same. So in here, you have to take some open neighborhoods of uh, yeah. a direct sum of the spherical objects you started yeah, it's, with. It's maybe more complicated in general if I do not put extra restrictions. It's not a quotient of a scheme by GLM, but I don't know. Yeah, but... Uh, I, think he, I think it will be. So uh, uh, Ben has a more general version than the one I'm writing here. Uh, for, for which you can, the collection of objects, you can just take some sigma collection, but it doesn't have to sit in a, in, a, in an abelian category, yeah. although maybe the condition will imply that it is the case. But... Yes, I believe that was the point from the very beginning, so if I don't know, because this two categories is just some symplectic, shifted symplectic. DG stacks, uh, and so then you can spell out many things just working with them. All right, but anyway, yeah, yeah if you want a billion categories, then I understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the thing is that in everywhere we're interested in in the Powell Moore homology in the, of the stack of objects uh, in some abelian category. So I I shed everything to yeah. Um. Okay, so we can define a two-dimensional cohomological whole algebra structure on the bohe homology of the stack of objects in C. So I recall some notations here. C is uh, the abelian category with its moduli stack and the good moduli space. Uh, a different C is the Ahom complex, which is a three-term complex, complex of vector bundles over the product of the stack of object in C by itself. Uh, and the total space of this three-term complex gives the stack of short and sequences. Um, I give you again the diagram I wrote earlier with the proper map P and the quasi-smooth map Q. This diagram commutes if you put the direction here at, 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 on, on the bottom row. And uh, the underlying constructible complex of the Schiffi-Fi Koha is the push forward by the good moduli sp space map of the dualizing shift uh, of the stack of objects. So this thing is a constructible shift on the good moduli space. And this constructible category, derived category has a monoidal structure. So we would like to define some multiplication on, on this object in this monoidal category. Um, the, sub, the superscript ver here indicates the rank of the, so the virtual dimension 
of the stack MC, uh, which is the dimension in the derived algebraic geometric sense. So it's a locally constant, and this constant shift is shifted on each connected component of the stack appropriately uh, using this uh, virtual dimension. Okay. So we have this constructible complex on uh, the good moduli space. The map Q is quasi smooth, which means that I'm not going to give you more details, but we can construct a virtual pullback by Q in a very explicit way. Um, and without using any derived algebraic geometry. So I'm aware there are some uh, more general constructions of virtual pullback in in uh, derived algebraic geometry. But in this case, when the when we want to pull back to the total space of a perfect complex. And this perfect complex is in degrees zero, uh, minus one, zero, one. Uh, it's possible to perform the construction in within classical algebraic geometry. So this uses this diagram, and yeah, let's keep it for now. Also, the map P is proper. So the fact that it is proper means that we can push forward in Borelmo homology. And if we combine this pullback and push forward together with uh, uh, the good modular space map. So proper by assumption or what? Proper by assumption, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so if we combine this virtual pullback together with the proper push forward, we obtain this multiplication. Uh, this is a map of constructible complexes, and it gives you, uh, it handles this uh, AC, this constructible complex with an associative algebra um, multiplication. Uh, yeah, that's a couple of questions. First, uh, probably you can upgrade it to the category of mixed Hodge modules. Uh, right, yes, we can upgrade everything to mixed Hodge modules. So uh, I didn't want to do that to, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, lighten the notations. But because yes. then you will have more, more, more gradings. On yes. uh, and I forgot what was my second question, but okay, go ahead. Maybe I'll and yeah, so your, your question about mixed Hodge modules is the opportunity to mention that uh, we built the pullback by Q in an explicit way, in particular, to be able to define it for mixed storage modules. Uh, because mixed storage modules on derived stacks are not worked out. Okay, so we have this uh, cohomological whole algebras. And as I explained in the first lecture, we would like to study a smaller subalgebra, which is a BPS associative algebra. So for this, we need a few properties. Uh, the first one of them is that this constructible complex underlying the cohomological whole algebra, the Schiffy-Five version of the cohomological whole algebra, uh, the 2D coha for C, doesn't have perverse cohomology sheaves in uh, negative degrees. So in the first lecture, we, we uh, I briefly explained how to define these perverse cohomology functors. Uh, when applied to the coha, they vanish in negative degrees. So how does the proof work? If you take C uh, to, if you specialize C to pre-projective algebra of a quiver, then this relies on the critical coha of a triple quiver with its canonical cubic potential and dimensional reduction. So I may have the opportunity later to tell you a bit more about it. Then if you take a general abelian category C, uh, you can use a local neighborhood theorem and the fact that, so it gives you some local description of the stack by pre-projective algebras. And then uh, this 
finishing of Perverse cohomology can be checked etal locally on the good modular space. And etal locally, this good modular space is described by the one for pre-projective algebras. So you can deduce this uh, vanishing in general. Um, so this vanishing property allows you to define, to take some, so you, you can take the degree zero perverse cohomology of the cohomology called algebra, the shifted version of the coha, and you define it, you say, you define the BPS algebra this way, which by definition is a perverse shift on MC, on the good modular space. Uh, uh, Lucien, uh, this definition works only for uh, two Calabiao categories. What? Um, it, so, uh, what do you mean? Uh, what, what kind of. Uh, well, what, what do I mean? That uh, mm, uh, you, you said that uh, mm, you use first a three Calabiao description from something with potential like locally like triple quiver with a cubic potential uh, and then uh -huh. yeah for example this uh, proposition about well then probably you can i even don't know what do you can but probably you can define it in a similar way i i, I forgot I, I remember i thought like years ago and probably ben did it uh, you can define it in a similar way. You define some kind of constructible shift or morally perverse shift on on the stack of objects and take the cohomology with coefficient in this shift. Like, and the shift is a shift of vanishing cycles instead of a direct image of a yes. so, constant shift. Yeah, what, what do, uh, doesn't work? So I have a section later on, on this critical coha, and I can tell you what happens. So yeah, if you take okay. a quiver with potential, you have some similar perverse cohomology defined very similarly, yeah. but it behaves quite differently in the sense that the perverse filtration starts in degree one. So for, for quiver with potential, you would have this property, but uh, you, you would have this vanishing for i less than or equal to zero. So it would vanish also for i equals zero. Uh, yes. Yeah, I understand you cannot give exactly the same definition because you do not have zero at all. Yeah, so you take you... the first one, which is degree one. And because it's degree one, what you get is not an associative algebra, but it's a, a Lie algebra. Mm, this I'm a bit confused because you ah you mean when you speak about BPS algebra not about Koha as for Koha you shouldn't have any problem for for three Calabiao but you say that if I try to define BPS algebra like this then I I will have only Lie algebra not an associative is it yeah correct? exactly so in these two oh, Calabiao okay. sense. Uh, if we take perverse cohomology on the good modular space in the two Calabiao category, what we get okay. is an associative algebra. Okay, then for pre-projective algebra, what is it? Uh, so what is it? This associative algebra is exactly the enveloping algebra of the PPS Lie algebra. Uh, all right, then I a bit confused for three Calabiao, you can define the BPS Lie algebra, take it enveloping algebra, and then declare it to be a BPS associated. <laughs> yeah. so yes, what... but uh, the thing is that we have a geometric construction of uh, this enveloping algebra in the two Calabiao case. Ah, okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's in this you room. see what I mean? If you, if you take like enveloping algebra in the three Calabiao case, because it's in perverse degree one, then it will land in, per in many perverse degrees. Uh, but when you dimensionally, yeah, maybe let's, let's I have a section about uh, yeah, uh, let's two-dimensional yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so we take this degree zero perverse cohomology and you have the truncation functor 
less than perverse truncation functor of this coha. So because the coha, Schiffified coha is in perverse degrees zero and bigger, then this is exactly the same thing as taking degree zero perverse cohomology. And you have this adjunction map to uh, the full Schiffified coha. And before I told you briefly how to define this multiplication map on uh, the full Schiffified coha. Uh, and then, because the map, the direct sum of the good moduli space is finite, then by taking, so this thing, this thing is uh, strictly speaking, the perverse truncation of the map M, the multiplication map, it gives you some multiplication of this BPS algebra. Um, so from the big Schiffified coha, we define some smaller uh, uh, perverse shift, which is also an algebra object, which is this corollary. Which means that now we can work in some uh, abelian category of perverse shifts, which is monoidal, and some, uh, some associative algebra object. Um, right. So now I can answer more precisely questions about critical chorus. Um, so we use in an essential way some properties for this 2D cohomological whole algebra using what happens for critical cohomological whole algebras of quiver with potential. And the reason we can do that is that there is a dimensional reduction um, allowing you to relate this uh, these constructions. And so using crit critical cora of a quiver with potential is essential to prove for these three properties. So the first one is to prove that the Schiffified cora is a semi-symbol complex on the good moduli space. It is essential to have a PBW theorem for this two-dimensional cora. And it is also essential to show that the Schiffified Koha is in non-negative perverse degrees. Um, so all these properties can be deduced from the pre-projective algebra case using the local neighborhood theorem. And the critical Koha so can be defined for any quiver with potential. But if we want to be able to dimensionally reduce to some pre-projective algebra, we use the triple quiver with the canonical potential. Um, so triple quiver is you go one step further after doubling, doubling the quiver. So from Q a quiver, you can double it, as I explained uh, earlier. And now you triple it. So you take the double quiver and you add a loop to each vertex. The canonical cubic potential for the triple quiver is defined as follows. So in here, you have uh, what I called earlier rho, the preprojective relation. And you multiply the preprojective relation by the sum of loops at vertices. Um, so this gives you some, some element in the path algebra of the triple quiver. And this is a potential. So if you look at the action of W on representations, then you get under, uh, you get uh, endomorphism of a vector space. And taking the trace of this endomorphism gives a function on the stack of uh, representations of the triple quiver. So for each dimension vector, you have this function. Uh, on a smooth stack. From this function, you can construct the Donaldson-Thomas shift, which I define to be uh, the vanishing cycle functor applied to the constant shift on the stack of, of representations of the triple quiver, which is shifted appropriately to make uh, the object perverse. So this object is a perverse shift on the stack of the triple quiver. And for the triple quiver, as for projective algebra, you can construct a good moduli space map 
which goes from the stack itself to some uh, algebraic variety, complex algebraic variety, uh, constructed by GIT quotient. And this map happens to be what, what is called approximable, approximable by proper maps, which means, without going into too many details, that it behaves like a proper map, despite being not proper. Um, so it behaves like a proper map, which implies, in particular, that it we have some base change theorem, and it commutes with the vanishing cycle functor. Um, OK, and the Schiffified critical cohomological whole algebra in this situation is defined to be the push forward by this good modular space map of the Donaldson Thomas Schiff. There is a way to construct a multiplication on this uh, constructible Schiff, but I'm not explaining it. And the result of Davison Meinhardt is that. This constructible complex is in perverse degrees at least one. Um, okay, so this constructible complex has an algebra structure. But this thing is more precisely the associated rated with respect to perverse filtration. And when you take the associated gradient of this algebra, which is, so you have a filtered algebra, you have the Koha multiplication respecting this filtration. Uh, this filtration is given by some perverse filtration. When you take the associated gradient, you get a commutative algebra, which implies that when you take the first perverse sheet, the first, the first perverse piece, of this Schiffified uh, Koha, you obtain a Lie algebra. It's a Lie algebra object. It's a Lie algebra object in the category of perverse sheets on the good modular space of the triple quiver. Okay. So now I will make the connection between um, this BPS algebra and two dimensional Koha. But first, so as I just wrote, we can define the BPS T algebra uh, in this way. It's a D algebra object on this coarse modular space, which satisfies some PBW theorem. So, which means that if you take this BPS T algebra, then you shift it by one. So this thing is in perverse cohomological perverse degree one. And then you tensor by some polynomial algebra in one variable, which is a uh, system equivalent cohomology of the point. And you take the symmetric power of this. You have a canonical map to the whole Schiffified cohomological whole algebra, which is an isomorphism. If you take derived global sections of this Schiffified PBW theorem, then you recover uh, a more classical uh, PBW theorem for vector spaces. Uh, right. So in this situation of triple quiver with potential, the, the BPS shift satisfies some support theorem. So we start from the right, so M Q tilde is the course modular space of representations for the quiver Q tilde. I shouldn't write W here. Inside this, you have the representation space for the double quiver. And you can request the additional loops you, you we added to construct the triple quiver to add by some fixed scalar. So it gives you some closed immersion. And if you get if you forget about these additional loops, but you just take the cost modular space for the double quiver, you have a closed immersion by sending uh, so it's zero on the second factor. And the composition gives you a map to uh, 
the course modular space for the triple quiver. Uh, we have the following important theorem, which is that this perverse shift, this BPS uh, perverse shift for the triple quiver with canonical cubic potential has support exactly in this sub close sub variety. And moreover, uh, you can recover the BPS shift for the triple quiver with potential in this way. So you can restrict to the cost modular space for the double quiver. And then you can uh, extend the results by the constant shift on this factor and push forward everything. Uh, so in rough terms, it means that the BPS shift for the triple quiver with canonical cubic potential uh, is supported on the locus where the loops act by a scalar and it is constant along um, on, on the direction of loops. Yeah, and probably geometrically, I should say that it's a way to define three-dimensional Calabio from two-dimensional Calabio by multiplication by a line. That's your what adding of loops corresponds to. So it's, there is a kind of a easy language from non-commutative geometry to commutative, and so that's exactly what happens. I see. Okay. Okay, so thanks for the comment. Um, so I'm running out of time. I don't know if I can take uh, how yeah, much time. Yeah, you can. You have one more page, so <laughs> something. Yeah, you, I you have know. one more page, so I can yes, just finish what I what I wanted to say. So I wanted to explain dimensional reduction briefly, which is what happens when you forget the loops. So. Q bar, Q bar was a double quiver and Q tilde was a triple quiver. If you take a representation for Q tilde, you may forget about the action of the loops and get the representation for the double quiver. So you get this map pi. Uh, you can do the same thing at the level of good moduli spaces and combining everything with good moduli space maps, you get this commutative uh, square. Um, so there is, you can compare the shifty cohomology called Hall algebras for the triple quiver with canonical potential and the 2D cohomology called Hall algebra for preprojective algebra, which I wrote in this formula. So if you push forward by pi the shifty fight triple cohomology called Hall algebra, the Donaldson Thomas shift. Oh, oops. Uh, if you so the Donaldson Thomas shift is on this stack. If you push forward by pi what you get is the dualizing shift of the stack of representation of PyQ. And I probably forgot some shifts, or maybe not. Yeah, but is it just the same as dimensional reduction in our paper with Maxim? Uh, if uh, you do not yes. care about uh, product, which uh, people proved later, I believe Ben proved and maybe Young and Zhao in slightly different way. But anyway, just at the level of uh, cohomological whole algebra, I believe that's what we did with, with Maxim in, in, in that Koha paper, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in your paper indeed that I read uh, this weekend in detail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there is also like compatibility of multiplication uh, Okay, so both sides come with a multiplication once you push forward by JH. Okay, and they coincide. So it has some consequences for the BPS shift and the two-dimensional Koha. So one first thing we can do is defining the BPS Lie algebra on the good modular space of the preprojective algebra by pushing forward by pi, the, this pi here, the BPS Lie algebra for the triple quiver with canonical potential. So we obtain a perverse sheet by the support property, we get a perverse sheet on m pi q. And it's exactly the same perverse sheet you would get 
if you restrict it by i prime. So i prime was uh, the inclusion of m q bar inside m q tilde. So you get some, uh, you can dimensionally reduce the uh, PPST algebra. And what you have is, the, you can also dimensionally reduce the PBW theorem. So if you push everything forward by pi, uh, the PBW theorem for quiver with potential gives you this isomorphism where all objects are constructible complexes in uh, for the preprojective algebra and the good model space of preprojective algebra. So on the left hand side you have some some map from the BPST algebra that I just defined for PyQ. And this PBW isomorphism actually restrict to a map from the BPST algebra for PyQ to the BPS associative algebra which was defined as degree zero per Vasco homology of uh, the full Cora, the full two-dimensional Cora. And in particular, by inspecting this diagram, we obtain the fact that an isomorphism of constructible complexes between associative BPS and the symmetric power of uh, the algebra BPS. So by compatibility of products everywhere, we obtain the result that the BPS associative algebra is the enveloping algebra of the BPS Lie algebra. Okay, so that's all for today. And next time I will explain how to, to describe by generators and relations uh, both the BPS associative and Lie algebras. Yeah, thank you very much. The next time, uh, next talk will be tomorrow at the regular, I believe, regular um, seminar time which is 3.30 in Kansas. Now, I have uh, two questions. So first, for this last isomorphism uh, of BPS algebra, so on the right-hand side, you have a Hopf algebra structure because it's enveloping algebra, Fili algebra, yeah? And uh, yes. so you, you cert then you do have it on the left-hand side, and how you define it intrinsically? Um... So you mean how do I define a Hopf algebra? Yeah, co-product on, on, on BPS in the left-hand side. What's the definition? Should you read just the exact sequence from right to left? So I think, um, so I have thought but very briefly about it, but this thing is indeed now an enveloping algebra. And it has, a, so it takes the dual of the multiplication. You have this multiplication map. Yes. And uh, this object is a perverse shift, which is self dual. So, Verdier self dual perverse ah. shift. Okay. Okay, and self-duality, uh, uh, is it related to the third duality in dimension two, that your uh, bilinear form on X1 is symmetric, uh, or uh, why it's self-dual? Why is it self-dual? Uh, that's a good because, question. Because, you know, normally Lie algebras are not self-dual. Uh, yeah, but it's a particular way of being self-dual. Yeah, yeah, I understand um, that it's not just taking the dual, but where the duality kind of roughly speaking, it's like analogous to taking a dual vector space. Like, so uh, I think like, okay, so this, this object was defined as degree zero perverse cohomology of some constructible complex. <laughs> Okay, let's write it. And this map JH behaves like a proper map. So it commutes with Verdier, uh, it, mm. like the Schrick and the star is the same. So it commutes with Verdier duality. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, I'm not sure it's the right reason. Yeah, but yeah, but sort of a formal reason, which might be true. No, because yeah, all right. Uh, because uh, this yeah, BPS three dimensional BPS algebra probably is not so dual. Um, so I don't remember on the top of my of my yeah. mind. Actually, like the reason yeah. is okay. So, so uh, there is a way to describe BPS for quiver with potential. So I don't put tilde. It's any quiver, any potential, any mm -hmm. uh, is by applying vanishing cycle for the trace of W to the yeah. constant shift on the yes. stack of Q, which is smooth. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, oh, uh, on the good moduli space. And then you, okay, so you don't take constant <laughs> shift, but you take the IC shift. I see on the stack, ah, on, on the good moduli space, not on the stack, but still, still some... <laughs> And, yeah. and if you like, if you take, so on both sides, you have perverse shift, perverse shifts, and vanishing cycle commutes with uh, Verge duality, and IC complex is Verge self dual. So I think that the yeah, BPS algebra is uh, the shiftified, the shift is a self dual perverse shift always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that so the algebra you get is itself. Uh... Yeah, the thing is that in three D case you have a BPS Lie algebra, uh, but on Koha you do not have the co-product. So in order to get Hopf algebra, you need to take universal enveloping on on some Lie algebra object. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah uh, okay maybe actually maybe it's not that bad okay all right uh, and uh, and i have a certain question very short one uh, mm, uh, your uh one karabergov with uh, theorem basically says that something is isomorphic as a graded vector space to symmetric algebra of something else mm -hmm. uh, so you do not uh, choose any basis in this something else but if you uh, uh, add a stability uh, uh, condition on, on the category uh, probably uh, you can choose a particular uh, filtrate a particular basis is is it true um so to choose yeah let, let's take some ppw example uh I don't know where it is anyway. Uh, I don't know if there is a canonical choice of basis. Uh, uh, okay, maybe not canonical, but there is a filtration. Yeah, all right. So anyway, we are quite... Uh, over the time. Are there any more questions? I do have a, a few questions. So uh, at, the, at the last part, when you were answering Yan's question, and you wrote the phi, yeah, the phi uh, trace of W. So I'm not clear what the phi here is. The trace of W is a map. Uh, uh, yeah, so I haven't explained this at all. Uh, uh -huh. So phi is a vanishing cycle functor. So is the vanishing cycle functor. Uh, that, that is from the modular space to itself. So uh, from the it goes from mm -hmm. So in, in in this case I consider the trace on MQ. So it's a functor from constructible you can derive category of MQ to okay. itself. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it preserves perversity, so it's perverse exact. Okay. 
uh, I shift it so that it's private. I, so I so, exactly. okay. so so that 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 uh, you apply this functor unlike in the purely uh, low stakes uh, construction, which is uh, sort of uh, picking a stronger type of resolution and then push forward. That that's from different spaces, but here that's with you. Okay, and my second question that. Uh, when you look at the PB, PBSD algebra, which is the first perverse cohomology of this A Q yes. tilde, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So how is the D algebra structure? And assume that the AQW, uh, AQ tilde W is an associative algebra. So the yes. D algebra structure is coming from just the, the associative algebra, but taking appropriate on the commutator um, correctly, is that what the algebra structure is coming from? The deep uh, Yeah, exactly. So you have uh -huh. this cohomological algebra, the perverse filtration starts in degree one. Yes. And when you take the associated gradient with respect to perverse filtration, it becomes uh -huh. commutative, which tells you that the first perverse degree part uh -huh. is uh, stable under the bracket. Okay. So with that, and so the result basically says this uh, algebra A, and that's the perverse, uh, the PBS associative algebra is generated, but I mean, if, the, if the associate graded algebra, if you take the perverse cohomology, it's generated uh, as associative algebra by degree one, because the universal enveloping algebra, which is generated by the D algebra itself. Am I correct in, in the interpretation? So, uh, I so we have two different perverse filtrations. We have the mm -hmm. one coming from quiver with potential, yeah, which, which is very different than the one coming from the pre-projective algebra. Uh huh. And the second so, one, so the the one on the top of the screen, the PBS associative algebra for the pi q, which is the universal enveloping algebra. So is I mean in this case. The PBS shift, uh, if, if you still get, uh, when you take the uh, first perverse cohomology, that gives you the PBS D algebra, which is on the right hand side. Am I correct? Um, so I, I'm not sure I understood. Uh, yeah, just, just on the top of the slides, what, yes. which you highlighted. Yes, so the, the, that's the main result. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so to recover. Mm -hmm. To recover this thing inside this object, yeah, you need to look at the perverse filtration induced on this object yes. by the three-dimensional perverse filtration. Okay. So you need to you have this perverse filtration, and mm -hmm. by pushing forward, by you forget the loops. Yeah. So you get an induced filtration of this object, and the first perverse piece for this perverse filtration will be the PPS uh, Lie algebra as mm -hmm. this, this object. Okay. So, so, so in this case that the, the PBS 3D and the part Q, which is the pre-projective algebra for the D algebra part, is that also described as the, uh, if you choose your perverse perversity, perverse filtration carefully, is that does that give you the first um, perverse cohomology of the right hand side of, of the left hand side? Um, it's more oh, complicated. No. It's more complicated. Okay. Uh, so this thing starts in perverse degree zero, uh -huh. and the first perverse cohomology will be something intricate. I mean, it's possible to with this formula to have a description. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but it will be something quite intricate. Okay. Okay, thank you. I do have many other questions, so I'll wait to see yeah, in future talk tomorrow and also on Friday. Thank you All very right. much. So, uh, so this is it for today, and uh, we are looking forward for the third talk tomorrow. Thank you, Lucien. The next one is most important.